there's been a mix-up in the Hutton gas storage area, the place where we keep all our canisters for breathing, welding torches, making our drinks fizzy, putting a delicate vinegar and mushy pea foam on top of our exquisitely prepared fish and chips, that sort of thing. This is the problem when you put Vantia in charge. Put the grey one behind the other grey one. No, not that grey one. The other grey one. Did I say grey? I meant grey, the darker grey. Well, this has been going on all morning. Harry nearly suffocated. Norma's been laughing her nips off and dropped a stitch. Wilma's been cross-eyed and not in a good way. The apology officer took a deep breath from her remlock and now has self-lighting farts. And as for Van Tien himself... Our lights are lines. Good evening, good evening. I'm Harry Balzac and I'm your host for this evening. Um, sorry about all the problems with the gases earlier. Um, with me is someone who always smells sweetly. It's Wilma Fingerdo. Oh, thank you, Harry. Good evening, everyone. On my right is someone who's familiar with noxious gases. It's Mia Harkness, our apology officer. Oh, that's better. Still, suppose it gives me something to apologise for now. Uh, next to me is Juan Kerr, and for some reason he's trying to move further away while holding his nose. What have you been eating? Thargoids? That one's bleaching my moustache. I'm going to go for a decontamination shower. At the other end of the studio, sensible woman, is the keeper of the original and best community vets diary, the wielder of the pan, it's Norma Stockers. That blooming lot. Harry called me up earlier and blamed having the wrong gas in his tank for all that heavy breathing. Look, a squirrel! No goods isn't good goods. Cecil suffers an unfortunate discharge. Cretaceous world creates creature concern. Gravity one, Alec Turner, nil. You know that definition of madness? A close shave for Yuri Grom. Annie from Avic asks, What? Another one? What a galaxy without community events? You'll never know. <laughs> The galaxy is short, very short. So short that there's a waiting list for stuff. With bartenders throughout the galaxy allowed to hawk their wares, or yours if you own a fleet carrier, and certain of the materials required by engineers and weaponsmiths in very short supply in those locked cabinets, it has become a seller's market. The Pilots' Federation took the important step of limiting prices for fear of inflating cat videos to obscene values. The consequence of which is that they're all gone. As fast as commanders hand over their ill-gotten gains to their nearest mixologist and have printed a price tag, there's a queue of people at the door offering huge wads of cash to try and get their hands on it. The Galactic Forums took the early step of creating a public notice board where people could place wanted ads and for sale signs. But for some reason, there's the kind of imbalance you see on dating sites, where there's all of one and none of the other. There's demand, but no satisfaction. There are rumours that the Pilots' Federation will be improving things by allowing far higher prices for goods at some point in the future, but there are concerns that this will lead to outbreaks of money laundering amongst some of the more piratical groups. Higher prices would, of course, make it worthwhile for commanders to start going to <coughs> abandoned <coughs> settlements and helping tidy up all the things left lying around. 
like a kleptomaniacal womble. But for the time being, robbers and experts in B&E aren't keeping up with the market for fell off the back of a Type 7 specials. We sure an enterprising Dell boy or girl will pop up with a get rich queen quick scheme sometime soon and in time honoured fashion proclaim that this time next year we'll be millionaires. But to date, the only one that we've seen is a bit of a dodgy scam unlocking a few engineers by selling the same item over and over and over again to your own bartender and keeping the receipts. As official apology officer, it falls to me to read this report from Commander Border Reaver. Message begins, breaking news at W Togao, in a Pilots Federation mandated gun license revalidation class, the older gamer had the closest of shaves in avoiding the most unkindest cut of all. It appears that Cecil was talking about his time in high ground combat zone missions in past days while holding a P-15 pistol. And then he sneezed, squeezing off a round as the weapon was discharged in the process. The round ricocheted off the range deck, flew between the legs of the older gamer, burning a path in their pants on the way, struck an overhead deckhead beam, and then spent itself in the sand burn behind the targets. When the older gamer looked down and saw what a near miss it was, they promptly fainted. The range supervisor has cited Cecil for premature operation of the safety catch on range and had station security conduct a DNA test on site. Message ends. We'd like to say that we're very, very sorry for Cecil. He's very much a force of nature, like a destructive storm. Or that fact that you couldn't hold in any longer. With the follow through. Today, we join the global scientific community in celebrating the end of an experiment which began 1300 years ago back on Old Earth. It all began when scientists at the Tanis fossil site in the former US state of North Dakota discovered some of the freshest dinosaur fossils ever, which were traced to the very day of the meteorite meets planet meets nuclear winter extinction event some 66 million years ago. So fresh and detailed were they that scientists of the time were able to extract much detailed information and, with the introduction of molecular DNA scanning and sequencing, recreated the DNA of the original animals. There was an early attempt at creating a Cretaceous World theme park where humans could visit the creature of, creatures of Earth's distant past, feed the cute ones, gawp at the non-cute ones from the other side of a 50,000 volt electric fence before having lunch and buying a soft toy. Tragically, there were incidents and the park closed shortly after. But what to do with all those surplus dinosaurs? Fast food chain showed some interest, as did the movie industry, but in the end it was agreed that creatures should be moved to one of the recently discovered Earth-like worlds out near the Orion Nebula, which was still quite remote at the time. The exact location is a strictly guarded secret, as you would expect. Here, the intrepid geeks set the dinosaurs free with just a bioengineered evolution accelerating virus for company. They wanted to know if the dinosaurs would have evolved into sentience and civilization, as humans have done. It took a while, but the experiment has finally borne fruit. Just this week, the dinosaur people of Planet X launched their first artificial satellite, named Grrrr-1. Safety protocols mean that the project now has to be wound down, before the said dinosaur people become properly spacefaring and start eating everyone. A spokesman said, This is serious. Even in the vacuum of space, we're Dyson with death. With this in mind, project leaders have gone to the nearby asteroid belt, selected a likely candidate some five to six miles across, and are now lining it up for a fast approach vector onto Planet X, which should tie up any loose ends. Well, it worked last time. Alec Turner the commander with a penchant for balls. Whether it be the bucky kind that races or the guardian orb that rolls, appears to have taken a correspondence course from the not-at-all-evil-can-evil school of daredevil stunts. 
without realizing that he was holding the diagram upside down. In a televised event, which some of you may have seen in the Pilots Federation livestream earlier, Alex showed that he is more brave than Nick Wallenda, the tightrope walker. More cunning than David Copperfield. No, no, not that one. Not the Dickens character. And more stupid than Cecil at the end of a lovely party where he plays ten-pin bowling with his empty gin bottles at the weapons console of a capital ship, thinking, I wonder what would happen if I pressed this big red button. Yes, Alec Turner, instead of using his SRV to leap over his ship, played tiddlywinks with the vehicles. With his ship launching into space and flinging his SRV into the tenuous atmosphere, resulting in his SRV plummeting. And I think that plummeting is the correct word here. Back to the planet's surface, where Alec stood defiantly in the centre of a large cross shouting, Come on then, if you think you're hard enough. Well, it was. It was very hard. And Alec's head, though it comprises almost entirely of bone with none of that grey squidgy stuff in the middle, wasn't. Not nearly hard enough. His SRV landed with more force than Cecil's elbow when making his way through a crowd to the bar. More speed than floor-mopping guy responding to a cry of clean up on aisle three. And with a result as inevitable as Hanky blaming Rampage for everything that goes wrong. As Alex's vision was suddenly showing a view that was horizontal and uh, at ground level, tinged in, a, tinged in a lovely ring of red, and a calming voice euphemistically explained that he had experienced critical injuries. All that could be heard was his small voice crying again, again. Over in Paladin space, it appears that the EGU weren't nailed to their perch, nor were they pushing up the daisies. They were just resting. Yes, thanks to the wonders of necromancy, they've risen from the dead like Nosferatu out of his grave and are on the prowl for necks to feed upon once again. Nabatine and Sugrivik appear to be in need of their very own mug helsing as they appear to be full of the suckers and a few Renfields to boot. Not got your combat rank up to Gunslinger yet? Now's the chance! And there are rumours that the recent instability in hunting systems might be as a result of some of their nocturnal forays. But at this stage, you'd have to be bats to believe it. We reckon it's just the EDF forgetting what the rules are in Avic. But more on this story shortly with Wang Care. Whilst news from Grom Space is usually quite hard to get hold of, and that which does make it through to the rest of the galaxy has to be taken with a big pinch of salt, our man on the inside has sent us the kind of expose that is likely, should he be caught, to end up being sent to salt, to salt mines or a far off prison moon. It appears that Yuri Grom has had a bit of an accident in the beer department. There are rumours that a recent batch of Kamita cigars that he was sent as a diplomatic gift turned out to be those n kind of novelty ones that the CIA used to use. The kind packed with incendiary substances, a detonator and trigger. Of course, as a larger than life character who is fond of strong women, strong liquor and fine cigars, Grum couldn't help himself when it came to snipping the tip and setting fire to things only a few inches in front of his face. Which of course, in proper comedy style, promptly caught fire. Which would have been fine, only he'd just oiled his mighty beard. The resultant conflagration left him more than a little red-faced, not least of which was in order to extinguish the galactic power-sized hairy bear and orderly grabbed the nearest spittoon and lobbed it over his head. Once he was extinguished, our cunning hut and pap snapped a shot of his lapel camera masquerading as a nice daisy and it turns out that Grom has no chin. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it's just beard all the way up to his bottom lip. The merest of dimples and some fresh-faced cheeks hide under his mighty face fuzz. And now his secret is revealed. 
Will Grom be obtaining a fair smirking to hide his chinless state? Is he going into hiding whilst his mighty face fluff grows back? Or is, with, as with Emperor's new clothes, everyone just going to say nothing and keep buying him beard trimming sets for his birthdays as if there's nothing wrong at all? No longer able to stroke his whiskers whilst thinking, our reporter says that Graham has had to fall back on his alternative evil overlord tactic of sitting there stroking his pussy instead. We mean cat. It's a cat! Really? Well, what another exciting week we've had in Hutton Space. We're in control of a new system, the first in over a year after a very touch-and-go fight for control. We've expanded into a new system, and we've got the fourth war in an old system in as many weeks. More on those stories coming up. In the BGS basement, Barnard's star rallied a little during the week, but slumped back into what seems to be its comfort zone of 28%. To compound its woes, it's also suffering from an infrastructure failure, so shipping water purifiers and power generators into the large pads in Boston-based and Miller Depot, and no, not the dodgy budget ones you conned us into buying last time. The other factions are lining up for another round of bickering, so let's get this one sorted quickly and a bit of influence boosted before they tie up too much of the influence. The outbreak in Epsilon Eridani was finally cleared, leaving on 43%, but the outbreak has merely shifted to the other Epsilon, Epsilon Indy, which finds itself on 40 don't forget that Epsilon Indy is home to 90% of Alvin subjects, so relieving the outbreak by shipping in basic and advanced medicines should be seen as a priority. Let's not leave it as long as Epsilon Eridani, shall we? Hot on the heels of snatching an extra time 4-3 victory from the jewels of Sirius last week, poor little Avic finds itself on the brink of yet another war, the fourth in as many weeks. Another contender, this time the Earth Defence Fleet, are lining up for a pop at being in charge. Exactly how EDF managed to overcome a 14-point gap in only a day remains a mystery, but it all smells as fishy as that kipper I'll be having when I'm back for breakfast. The push for overall control of Wolf 562 came to a head this week with Hutton going to war with Wolf 562 and the, as the long-standing controlling faction. We do like to we do seem to like things being on difficult level recently, as with Avic. It went down to the final day with Hutton bringing it back from 3-1 down to win the system on the seventh and last day. Thanks to all that fought, including our friends from the Paladin Consortium, Belwyn Darkstar takes over from me as the new boy in the System Custodians group. Um, dark chocolate digestives for me if you're listening, Belwyn. Not all that milk chocolate rubbish if you don't mind. That's right, the last system we took control of was Narnia, over a year ago. During last week's expansion, Hutton found itself in the little system of Manar. In addition to having a Manar Manar do 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 gag worthy name, there is a seemingly defunct player faction, not their home system I might add. Petra Station, a Coriolis orbiting the Earth-like world of Petra, and lots of feddies in need of a re-education of how to be better humans. Have at it, Tuckers. We've just gone 3-1 down. At the overachieving end of the Hutton Systems table, we have six systems above 60%, two of which are over 70. Remember, peeps, don't boost or dump data into systems that are above 60% or we'll just waste an expansion and waste more time and effort withdrawing. Priorities this week are, if you want to truck something, relieve the outbreak in Epsilon Indy and the infrastructure failure in Barnard Star, and then boost influence in Barnard Star, Wolf 562 and George's Pants. If you want to shoot something, win the wars in Avic and Manar. Community events are a wonderful way to spend your time and this week we have information on All the Clouds in the Sky, The Nexus Exploration, Trip Omega, Does the Sun Still Rise in the East? In the East, Explore the Core Infernal Expedition 
and the Lost Souls Expedition 3. Links will of course be posted in Twitch chat and also in the description of the YouTube upload. Commander Deluvian's expedition, All the Clouds in the Sky, is by no means peerless. In fact, they've been doing a lot of peering. Expedition Day 199. Well, good luck finding Horsehead Dark Region just looking outside your window. I think I've spent enough time trying to find the system that would give me a good view of it, so eventually I had to use the map to highlight it. Going to the Flame Nebula now, a much better object, just still a very difficult one to isolate in the entire sector of the Orion Complex. Expedition Day 202. And who says that the Trapezium Sector AF-ZC5, the, the reference system, is the right one? Well, it's right in the middle, so I guess it does make sense. But one thing is sure. If you want to have better vistas, you need to visit all of the surrounding systems. Actually, my favourite location in the region to showcase Flame Nebula is Trapezium Sector AF-ZC4. Not too far off, but a much better view. Still, heavy exploration is advised. The next waypoint will be even more challenging. Barnard's Loop, which is just huge. If you're right at its doorstep, you do not have to have the best possible view. Let me work it out and see what I can do to represent it in my own way. Expedition Day 205. We've been hanging out in Trapezium Sector AF-ZC0, the reference point of Bernard's Loop, and as mentioned before, I had to actually pull back quite a lot in my DBX Pilgrim to get far enough to be able to take a good shot of one of the most magnificent and biggest nebulae in the sky, Bernard's Loop. We could spend a month here and still find some vistas that nobody's seen before. Slowly closing on the Orion Complex, we are getting ready to move straight to the Horsehead Nebula and have one more short stop around the Orion Dark Region, the very last point of interest in the Orion Complex sector. Stay tuned, Commanders! Commander Caboose, with the fleet carrier named the, Harry, the, the Gary Hogan, after his grandfather, who actually worked for NASA, is fed up with waiting and he sent us this update on the Nexus. Legacy and the Gary Hogan. Ah, oh, I went to school with him. Used to eat boiled eggs with the shells still on them during English class. Anyway, Legacy and the Gary Hogan are packed together to begin tritium mining. With no new news regarding account transfers, the Gary Hogan will be launched on their expedition into the black. Commander Radium had a quicker turnaround than Orion Space Taxi as Trip and Omega continues apace, but he had time to scribble this note. The third phase of Titan Contractor's fourth and largest expedition started on the 2nd of April, taking the squadron on a massive 72,000 light year journey across the galaxy. While Phase 3 is only approximately 31,000 light years and it encompasses our point of interest focused journey to Colonia, Phases 4 and 5 span across 41,000 light years can and can only be participated in by commanders who have joined us for Phase 3, as this trip will not return to the bubble until the 5th of June. Our journey to Colonia encompasses what we call a point of interest focused journey. Instead of completing the Colonia route via straight line jumps directly there in 15 hours, we will be spending an entire month jumping our carriers through interesting and beautiful points of interest near and along the Colonia Bridge route established by the Brewer Corporation. Famous points of interest like ring neutron stars, beautiful nebulas, black holes, megaships, earth-like worlds and starports are just some of the sites we will see on this journey for a total of 21 points of interest visited. While joining the trip, carriers direct while joining the trip carriers directly now, that doesn't make sense. While joining the trip directly now that the journey has commenced will be difficult due to the ranges involved. Commanders are welcome to visit our Discord to view information about our route and follow along if they so wish. 
Phases 4 and 5 will be announced upon reaching Colonia, but will centre themselves around pure exploration, allowing commanders to travel out deep into the black and discover what the galaxy truly has to offer. Follow our Twitter at tcon underscore feed for daily updates and check our links. Go east, young pilot, said no one ever, but Commander the Presence is still doing it. Does the sun still rise in the east, in the east? Week five. Commander the Presence, at your service again. I had been looking forward to stretching my legs this week to go see the Umbra Centralis Nebula, en route to the first of the DSSA carriers on the expedition and leaving the last of the actual stations behind. Unfortunately, the Thargoid find last week thoroughly unnerved me. I then added insult to injury by watching an old holovid called It Came From Cubicle 3, which utterly, uh, utterly terrified me and I haven't slept all week. I dare not close my eyes. I even had to break open the emergency Horlix in an effort to succumb to its milky oblivion. The upside of not sleeping is I've managed to do some proper exploration. In addition to actively looking for and finding a G-class supergiant star, my favourite part was finding a lovely little red and green unnamed planetary nebula at Stumi VE-Q E5-5995. All the systems around this little gem hadn't been touched. Well, they are well and truly sullied now, and makes for some glorious views and pictures. Having been all around the nebula, I finally headed in and rushed at the black hole to hit its exclusion zone and see what lensing effects and light warping I could get there. It didn't disappoint. There, literally, was the eye of the nebula unwinking before me. It was at this point I remembered the old saying, stare into the void long enough, the void stares back at you. Well, that thought was enough to have me reaching for the last of the emergency Horlicks and swear I'd go counting nothing but, but bacterium all the way to the Ether Nebula in the hope of regaining some courage and fortitude. Let's hope things look up as I go to the top of the galaxy next week. Until then, TTFN 07. Explore the core Infernal Expedition is heading internally, infernally, as they potter around the galactic core. Commander Infernal Moose regales us with tales of some of the fun that they have been having. It's been another exciting week on the Explore the Core Infernal Expedition. The expedition has moved another 20,000 light years and is now at the Blue Rhapsody Nebula, past the furthest system from Sol in our itinerary. In spite of this distance, commanders continue to join the expedition and join in our events and discoveries. After we departed the Void Heart system, we moved to the Aether Nebula, a spectacular and underappreciated region 2,000 light years above the galactic plane. While we were there, we held a number of events, including our first on foot event with commanders playing football with a Guardian Orb, followed by an SRV race off the side of a 5 km high crater rim. Commander Rex Kramer 15 also discovered double overlapping tritium hotspots there for future explorers arriving with fleet carriers. We next moved to the red and green glory planetary nebula where we held this race to deliver building schematics from the scan will soon be over as bartender to sensor mid madness's bartender with commanders racing both on foot in the carriers and in stock vipers around the neutron star we were orbiting, which led to some unfortunate crashes as well as an exciting finish. After this event, we headed to the planetary beacon where we landed our ships 500 metres from the beacon and raced on foot to get to the top of with all commanders shooting each other with on foot weapons. There were many deaths and this system briefly became the most dangerous place in the known galaxy. Our next destination was Goliath's Rest. At 2,800 light years above the galactic plane, this stop was also the highest stop on our itinerary. Although the stellar density is quite low here due to the abundance of neutron stars, 
Even commanders with ship ranges as low as 15 light years could jump on their own from our last stop to this one. We held ship launch fighters races here around the carrier, with some commanders watching the race from the, within the bar and bridge viewing areas, with the galaxy providing a spectacular back backdrop. The expedition has also made making numerous discoveries of black holes, high G worlds and exobiology life with first entries in the Galactic Codex. The expedition leaderboard continues with fierce competition among the expedition crew. Unfortunately, some space madness has also set in and there are now rumours of an Edmund Marne spying among us, spy among us which is making commanders uneasy and constantly looking over their shoulders. Some commanders have even gone so far as to crash their ship launch fighters into the carrier bridge to eliminate the perceived threat. In spite of this, morale may remains high and all are welcome to join us. Our friends the Fatherhood have finally set off on their Lost Souls Ex Expedition 3. Apparently they're all too busy doing something in the rigging and generally having fun to be able to have time to tell us about it. But they did leave a tape in an old blockbuster case so that we could take a look at their mass jump at the start. <laughs> can someone, sorry, can someone do it in a voice chat because obviously people might, some people might not be on this. Needs to be done in in uh, game chat because not everyone will be on voice. <laughs> so Manny Manamaya. There must be more, so email I took part at huddenorbital.com and let us know. Look at that, almost entirely seamless, just one or two seams put in there. Mm. <clears throat> almost. If I was going to do an edit, it would be fine in that, but never mind. So, how is everybody? How have we been doing? Very good. That's good. Yeah. Hmm? Good, that's, that's enough of that, good. right? Yeah. Better, better now that I've unmuted myself. <laughs> <laughs> you have? Or worse, depending on your outlook, you know. Mm. Oh, we've got mm. some stuff to chat about here, haven't we? Oh, let's. Mm. Stuff? Yes. Yeah. Stuff to stuff. chat about. Should we, yeah, should we, should we talk about. Uh, the Frontier live stream now that we have one regularly oh. and just before the I show. I never saw it today. I was I mm. got home too late. That's all right. I'll never see it. Because if, <laughs> if, every, if everybody had seen it, it would be, make this bit a bit boring. <laughs> I nearly never got my paint job last week. You didn't? I nearly never. I got the first one. You nearly never, it, so you did? Yeah. Excellent. But it, was a, it yeah. was a close run thing. If they hadn't waffled so much at the end, I would have missed out. <laughs> Did you get both the T9? No, I just jobs. get one. Just, just the first one. Yeah. Just the first one. It took me well, three weeks. They've uh, they had paint jobs uh, this week as well, but the, the uh, DBX is the, the featured ship. So uh, mm -hmm. you've got a DBX, haven't you? I've seen it. No, oh, me? Yeah, I've got, yeah. I've got a couple of them. I've never had one of those. I, I sort of went straight to the ass back in the day. In fact, mm. that was before the DBX was a thing. So I, uh, yeah. I think oh, I like my DBX. Yeah, I like the Type Six, the Asp. Yeah, 
The only downside like is, the, is the four air scoop. <laughs> or the four size four scoop, I should say. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Although, why use a DBX or an ASP if you have a Type 9? Yeah. For exploring. Exploring. For anything. There's yeah. nothing, For wrong anything. With, nothing wrong with exploring in a Type 9. You don't want to go. Exploring. It's not too T9. big and bulky for it. I've been exploring. I went to Beagle Point in a Type 9. No, no, you and rushed about. Well, yeah, you're different. <laughs> That, that's not exploring, that's yeah. rushing about. Going off in a huff. I didn't rush about. I did not rush about. I went to... To get uh, to Beagle Point in that time, you must have been rushing. What time? No, I took ages. I think it was half past nine. Was um, half past nine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I took so ages going to Beagle Point in the Type 9. I went to Type 10 last year. Ah, that's right. A massive yeah. Half. And I used, mm. the check, I used the checks method on that one. Mm. But no, I'd, I'd been. You make I'd it sound to... like a method of birth control, rather yeah, than it is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd, the rhythm I'd... method with the metronome in the sideboard. <laughs> <laughs> I do find that the DBX or the the Asp Explorer for exploring does mean you require a little less concentration when landing on planets compared to a Type Nine. Yeah, yeah, depends on the planet. Yeah. I'd yeah. have mine up to yeah. some like I had mine up to just over forty five light years jump range. That's that's decent. That's as much yes. as you need. Yes. And there was bags of room inside. <laughs> try, try, uh, uh, try doing exobiology up the mountains in a in a Type Nine though. You never find yeah, it. I don't do it up the mountains. I, you couldn't go then. Well, you still can't. On I'm Xbox, in my but... Type Nine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so yes, we had uh, the fourth in a row. We had Frame Shift Live number four this week. Um, can I just interrupt again? Did you say? Amelia, that means you were right. What's that? I was right. You were right, yeah. About what was I right about? about? You don't need an ASP or a DBX if you get a Type 9. No, no, it's no. the best ship. Yeah. It's the best ship in the game. It's, a, it's the best all-rounder. Mm. It's multi-role, that's what it is. It's multi-role. Yeah, it's multi-role. Come on, the Python is multi-role. The Anaconda is multi-role. And the, the, the Type and 9 the... is multi-role. Yep. Exactly. T9 is too big for outposts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we did, that's because... Land outside roll. the outpost yeah. and walk in. And who they're all, willingly... They're all scabby uh, anyway. How who do you willing... walk in space? Look at Hutton. Look <laughs> at the right, rest of okay, Hutton. So you really want to go somewhere like that? You we land on legs. the outpost and walk in. Yeah. <clears throat> and hope it doesn't tip over. Yeah. You'll be telling us about your space uh, your space combat T9 soon. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I've Is seen it, it yeah. done. Well, you just yeah, land on things, don't you, with a T9? It was just called the... things I've seen done. Now, whether they're a good idea or not is another thing. It was just called a battle bus well, that... so anyway, That's debatable. Anyway, back back to our hosts, who you can see there, which are Arf and uh, and Bruce. And you notice quite a few calls in the chat, I noticed, for uh, denim. But no denim this week. Oof. But Arf, as you can see, Arf was sporting quite a nice, well-worn, I might add, a NASA T-shirt which is appropriate because I, I've heard that he's taking up space. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, no, no. What was, no. What was Steak Garrido wearing? Uh, sort of a grey, you can see in the picture. He's a, sort of like oh, a like dark him, blue. Don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's gone all yeah, he's corporate kind of and very, sensible. Very mm-hmm. corporate neutral. Yeah, it just looks yeah. like a dark grey shirt. Yeah, yeah. That's not what At least he hasn't gone Zuckerberg with a like a grey T-shirt every, yes. every week. Um you notice and a nice, haircut. Those, <laughs> those nice mugs on the table there were mm. uh, donated by the oh. fatherhood. You can see the oh, oh, t- 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 no, no, in, in Twitch there. In, in Twitch, we've just got Bedoom saying, "Surprised to see Hutton orbital mugs on Red Bubble." They are not genuine Hutton mugs. Those are fake mugs, and we don't yes. like them. Quite but, honestly, we are not surprised to see them on there because they've been on there for ages no. and they're, they're not very good. No, no, no. The, the handles fall off them. And they're not. And they're not real mugs either. And they the don't mugs look anything like ours. And no. as well. And they stain and, easily. And they smell. Yeah. Yes. So I mean, does anyone who buys one ever, ever bring one out in front of your hut and truck up? We'll laugh at you. And they'll point. And they'll point. Yeah. So we. Uh... We talked about they did go on two hours. And if if anybody watched it, you did realise that in the middle there was a bit of an intermission. I was kind of seeing a bit of a bit of a some technical failure or oh dear. other. Um, seven seven minutes. I made somebody must have knocked a plug out somewhere. Oh, I don't. Know. 
I think uh, the the screen was freezing, so uh, they they bailed out. So an intermission with with no ice cream. That's oh. a bit of a disappointment. I'm old I'm enough to remember intermission in the middle of in the middle of movies. Ooh. Yes, <laughs> I remember that as well. Oh, when yeah. you didn't have to wee in a bottle from the middle. Yes. <laughs> mm. What what from here? Mm -hmm. With these and you can buy a chalk case. <laughs> So obviously running in the background was uh, Twitch jobs, so they were still running the uh, seasonal paint jobs, which uh, they've added two more um, so the, to the spring seasonal paint jobs. There's a, a Tranquil and a Serene. And uh, is that is that the DBX picture up there, Harry? Um, do. It's the oh, Serene on it. It looks, yeah. looks very much like the others, except the, the flowers have tree trunks. Um, and there, it's the DBX at the moment that you can get the Twitch Top paint job for, but they're coming for the T9, the Crate Phantom, the Anaconda. I think there's another one which I can't remember in the store. Mm -hmm. So if you if you like them, fill your boots. There it is, sort of pale blue with. Quite can't be, is, are they flowers or just splats of paint? You know? well, they look like no, they are flowers. Cherry trees. Cherry blossom. Flowers. Yeah, cherry blossom. Yeah, very good. It's very, very pretty nice. paint job. Yes. yes, yes. So if you want one of those, but I was looking. They, they've named them tranquil, serene, calm, and lax. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's not spot, right, is it? Anyone spot the odd one out? There? <laughs> yeah, it, it, lax. <laughs> are, they, are these shit? Are these things for elite? Very safe. A new game we, we, we we're joining in with. <laughs> Maybe lax is short for chillax. Laxative. That was my thought too. Um, <clears throat> do you want this week's big news story? Yeah. This week's big news story is there is no news. So oh. um, they're still looking at uh, commander transfers. If commanders want to transfer their accounts from console, and not obviously not just the credits, but the full transfer, they're still investigating and will advise when they have mm. something to report. Oh, okay. So you did say they are working on it. It's not. They're yeah, not just saying it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're oh, not yeah. just well, looking at still yeah. Yeah. investigating. They are working on it, but uh, they don't know to what extent they'll be able to transfer every last nut, bolt, washer, and you know all that stuff you've got in the drawer in your uh, <clears throat> back of your T nine workshop. Um. Features. I'm not going to do any spoilers of Galnet news because uh, Beetle Wather uh, will cover that. But I realize this Hudson fellow is trying to repeal, is it the 77th Amendment, um, which restricts presidents to eight years? Did I hear that right? Oh, I missed that amendment. Mm -hmm. It's unconstitutional. I thought I'd gone deaf for a minute there. It's... Are we talking real politics now? <coughs> well, no. Obviously, it's exactly obviously, yeah, yeah, it does real, real politics. politics of the thirty-three oh eight. Yes, mm, mm. real, anyway. real, real, how, real politics. How much more real well, do you want? Well, let's let's not because I don't know. I haven't heard the Galnet News Digest yet, but it could be in there. So uh, we're talking about the politics of thirty-three oh eight. You know, we're, you know, I am quite happily. I, I I say proudly, never actually done power play. No, I've never. No, done that either. have I. Mm. I, I've done it to the extent of doing the uh, the Lee Yong Ri, um, <clears throat> you know, the exploration. Oh, yes, thing. the exploration thing, yeah. And getting the Pack Hound missiles. That, that's I've done, I went through the motions of doing what I needed to get those things, but I've never actually done power play. Yeah, Pack Hound missiles apparently are very, very pretty. They are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I'm sorry. If you did it to get the rewards, I say that's that's. Yeah, if you did you've it done to get it. the rewards, you did it. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's that's yeah. the extent to which I did it. I'm not saying I but didn't do it. But you I still am... did it. Oh. That's the extent to what Guilty a lot of as yeah. charged. That's the extent to what a lot of people do. As I want those mining lasers. Or, or people want, want the prismatic shields or the imperial those shields. hammers. Yeah. What, are, what are the you know and all the other? But I think the thing is, though, do you don't have to buy it all before you. Before you leave, before you go, I'm not doing your, your dirty work anymore. Do you don't have to buy all the things that you want to buy because you lose access to them after you leave. Yeah, that, that's right. Yeah. Your your merits decay over time. So mm. you, you get to a certain merit level. I think it was five for the exploration bonus, which takes some doing. Yeah. You know, it's a it's a pretty tedious few days, but it, it, it was worth it, you know. Mm. Um, 
and I do like the pack hounds, like you say. They're very pretty when you fire them. And all my trade ships, I tend to carry a couple of packs with the extended magazines. <laughs> so the pirate jumps in and you just obliterate them. There's no messing around. It's just... <laughs> Yeah, a couple that of seems uh, Alex big. Zuno style. <clears throat> yeah, a yeah. couple of racks of those because you, you know you don't want to be full of armor and yeah. module. You know, uh, whole tank in when you're a trade ship, you want it for cargo space. So I just obliterate them with a a couple of pack hound salvos. Um, that would do it. If somebody they mentioned the community events, obviously. Flossie has that well covered, so we're not going to do any spoilers. But, uh, uh, no, and I think, I mean, it's one of those things. I think the, there is an advantage to having a central uh, d database, if you like, of all this stuff. But I don't think it actually takes away from what Norma does in going through, because with, without yeah. with those, you don't get any reports back from people who are in mm. there. It's not a personal service. It's a, it's a very useful yeah. way of being able to <laughs> find out what's it's it. Like it's, a sign, it's a signpost, isn't it? It's, yes. You, go you, and, know, you know what's on. It's like a it's like it's like a dating app. You can swipe right to, to go on it, but you actually want to actually have a date at the end to find out what it was like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> do you? That, that analogy is going to break down very soon, so I'm going to move on. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> that um, that story that Wilma did earlier about uh, Alex Turner and uh, his oh. SRV. Mm, yeah. Um, we got that. That's we up, have. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the, obviously, if you saw it in the in the uh, uh, live stream earlier, then uh, this is a chance to go and get yourself a drink or whatever. It's it's five minutes forty seconds, but I think it is worth seeing because it is incredible, and that we have got the uh, the outtakes at the end as well. So here we go, <laughs> and nothing happened when I pressed that. That's pretty good. That's impressive. Seamless. Press right. something else. <laughs> I'll press something else that that'll teach me. I moved. That's because I moved the video to a different location. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yep. Bear with me. Let's do this. And let's... this will all be fine in the edit. No, yeah. Right.
danger, our integrity 3.7%. US Army was destroyed. Danger, hull integrity at 36%. Warning, <laughs> integrity at 54%. Integrity is at 51%. Warning, structural integrity at 51%. Structural integrity is at 53%. Danger, hull integrity is at 39%. It was on it was on repeat. I didn't want to do this is where I came I in. I like the captions. Yeah. I like the captions. That was, that was well done, Alex. I think that was brilliant. Yes, that was that was very entertaining. Very good. All right, back back to bits where we I, have to do some work. I now. did like the one that hit you it hit you in the face the best though. <laughs> yeah. No. So the the, the other mm. little bit of news. Um Little Lave Con. Um Lavecon was mentioned on Lave Radio on uh, on Tuesday night, and Arf confirmed that Frontier will be there in some capacity, mm. uh, even though he hasn't mentioned it to the organisers yet. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine trying to go in some private capacity. We're going, Arf, what about this? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not working for Frontier. So no, be, anyway, that's all utter um, speculation. That's where he just comes and shoots abuse at you. He goes, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> and you go, but half the bar's not open yet. No, that's just how he talks. <laughs> uh, that was. Uh, uh, we, the, I suppose the other thing we should say about the other thing we should say about Lavecon is that I posted this in the um, in our Facebook group that that uh, Karen from uh, from Lavecon team have uh, sent out a, a, an update to say they had to reset their <clears throat> mailing list. So. If you want oh, to get yeah. Lavecon, uh, I'm, I'm trying to type and talk, and I can't do that. Uh, you want to get onto their mailing list? There's um, you need to do it again. Lavecon, and uh, I'm just uh, oh, that's that that link's all been um. Hang on. 
talk, talk amongst yeah, yourself. Yeah, no, sorry. The, was, that a GD, was that a GDPR thing or something? No, I don't know. I know it's probably... Yeah. Probably forgot to do something. I'm just yeah, maybe. I'm just posting that into the Twitch chat there, so that uh, you re-sign up again to make sure. Because I, I, with any luck, I mean, I'm. I mean, obviously, I don't know how much of the this uh, conference centre that they've that they're hiring. But if they went for the whole thing, mm. there are more rooms there than there are at Shawbrook. Certainly, both bedrooms and yeah. breakout rooms. So they could make it quite a big event. So. Hopefully that will mean that the tickets won't sell out within 30 minutes of going on sale. Hmm. <laughs> like, like I have done. It's been, a, which has always been a problem for uh, a people who are not in, in dear old blighty land and people who are at work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although they're still going to have to take into account the people who have carried across. Yes. Obviously, well, if you're carrying tickets across, you're going to get. You know what I mean? Oh, well, they have you, said that people, people who are carrying stuff across, they will get first, first dibs at everything. Yeah, that's entirely. It's only fair. Which may use up the extra, so you might be back to normal. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's well let's see. We'll but have then, to wait if, and see. if people are carrying tickets across, they shouldn't have the same demand because some of those people already have tickets. Mm. So, so uh, let's yeah. wait and let's wait and see. But just let's wait and see. Watch this space and keep it. Keep your eye. Yeah, keep your eyes peeled. I say. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so back and. Finish off with the with the live time. Hutton got a shout out, as did <clears throat> Live Radio. And I thought other... it was going. To, I thought that said shoot out. They can have shoot out if you want. You can't have a shoot out. We often do. <laughs> and they went to their off. It's become a thing. Um, at some point in the past, they published a photograph which has got uh, Zach and <clears throat> Bruce um, against a green screen background, <laughs> and <laughs> people have been put in together. <laughs> <laughs> various montages of of the two of them. So you can see the picture there, um, <clears throat> the first footfall. And it's, oh, that's no moon. That's, uh, yeah, half, said. that's <laughs> half, half's noodle, yeah. It's, uh, that, was, that was one of the funny ones, I thought. Don't call him an half's head. <laughs> Actually, uh, <laughs> half's head uh, will, oh. does feature in this show a bit later on. And, in fact, it actually featured in the publicity shot that I used to send out to t tell people when we had half an hour to go. So, uh, oh, OK. No, see if you spot it as we go through. It's in Amelia's section. So, mm -hmm. I mean, let's go ahead, And son. I've... Uh, obviously, it's the reason why we have show notes here, so I can I'm not write it down and forget who the commander was. But uh, commander found an absolute what Bruce described as a mahusive crater um, on a on a body. Is it, it can huge? It's mahusive. <laughs> in fact, it was so big it had like cliffs inside it. Is uh, this on our head as well? No, no, no. It's, no, because okay. no, <laughs> I think that might have been easy here. In front of his face, <laughs> yes. No, and this is on in system Uchost. So uh, somebody oh, kindly post that into the chat. You can you can put it in the game. It's Uchost M O C D zero, and it's body number six. And um, in fact, there would have been a, a news item about that if I'd actually spotted that the uh, the guy had actually responded to to my tweet asking. What his commander name was, and I didn't. I didn't get a nudge from Twitter, so we missed the time oh, to, to actually get it. Otherwise, there would have been all sorts of speculation well, about we, what we, bases might appear in there. We can always go back and uh, rewatch the stream and do the story mm. next week. Mm, yeah, other excited things will get in the way, mm. um, and then the usual stuff with stellar screenshots and, and that sort of stuff to finish off the show. And they went off to play the game, so uh, oh, yeah. that was hilarious. <laughs> Stop. Kind of stopped watching at that point. How to fall? Oh, I watched it all. How to fail at missions <laughs> 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 on foot <laughs> and not uh, on purpose, like that, Eggy Poos were. Is that not the Eggy Poos? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that not the Eggy Poos tactics? Well, uh, um, Bruce has been so you know, no half was creeping about really, um, it was being careful. And Bruce was late arriving. Once he arrived, all hell let loose. <laughs> 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 Yeah, it was oh. quite funny. No. What were the screenshots there, Simon? I didn't see them. Uh, they were the collection of screenshots, stellar screenshots that Paul Crowther um, picks every week. Um, the, the usual very, very good standard. They usually show about half a dozen. Um, and if you 
sometimes I, I sometimes see them during the week. Uh, Frontier put out a post during the week that's usually got half a dozen or so in them. Um, very good, very good quality. Well, good. Uh, now I've got a last bit in here, uh, which I put in, which is not related to anything we spoke about up to now. It is related mm -hmm. to the wonderful uh, Sally Morgan Moore. Um, one of the things we you may have spotted if you've ever been to a, an event with her where there has been a bar, it's her tipple of choice is mm -hmm. red wine and Coke. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, and uh, obviously many people have said to her, that's weird. That's absolutely weird. Why would you do that? And I last night was watching... It's weirdly uh, good. I was watching an episode of Travel yes. Man. And they were in ah. the Basque country. And in the Basque yes. country, they have a drink called Calimocho, which is red wine and Coca-Cola. Ah, okay. Apparently, oh. the, the legend has it that uh, somebody was organising a festival and he bought a whole load of red wine and it was awful. And for some reason, he put it with Coca-Cola and it tasted much better. So it's, it is a thing. So I've sent the message to Sally so that she can actually wave that in, under people's noses when they say, yes. what are you doing drinking this? It's a real <laughs> thing. Cali Macho is a thing. thing. Yeah. There you go. But then, I'm, yeah. I'll, You've I'll already the, drink, the, red, the, red wine, the red wine you drink. You want to be careful with the coca. It makes all the brown paper bags soggy. You know, be careful with that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was going to say you're from, you're from Glasgow and you'll drink anything, but you don't drink, so yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just have lemonade in mine. <laughs> but you always do. I mean, if I wanted, there's always a every every Sunday morning. There's always a, a bottle of uh, Buckfast tonic wine with a little bit left in the bottom. So you know, I might try it one day. Well, it works <laughs> for the Mad Monks of Matt Van Marlen. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Are we ready? Uh, and Debbie just things? asked, am I sure I wasn't having a dream about Sally in a Basque? No, it was the Basque country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, it was, yeah, and it was you that was wearing the Basque. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I think it's, I Get think... your facts right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I think, yes. Let us move, let us move. Yes, yes it's time. <laughs> I think it's time now uh, to move on to the bit that fanboy PBSF Ghost reckons is the best part of the show. And, and so do the rest of us, of course. Uh, we'll move on just as soon as someone solves this week's anagram, which describes our colleague Cecil B. Trumpington. Mm. And the, term, the phrase is a vodka farm trier. Vodka farm trier. No. 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 Um, well, I'll, I'll give you a clue. Um, yeah. The first two words are time for. Uh huh. Oh. 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 It's Flossie with the CG News. When the universe is in trouble. Bug infestations in the bubble Your home stations burn rubble What on earth can we do now? Interstellar initiatives Let Flossie tell you what it is Then you can get involved with this You should listen to what Flossie says Interstellar Flossie tells us what she thinks it is Then you can get involved with this Now you should listen to what Flossie says Hello, Flossie here with this week's CG News Last week's CG's Taurus Mining Ventures Initiative finished short of Tier 4 with 680,000 581 units collected. In addition to credit rewards, Taurus Mining Ventures was offering up to three paint jobs to the top 75% of participants. The number of paint jobs available was dependent on the tier reached, and as it was tier three, all three paint jobs are being awarded. First one, tier one, was type 6 military sand 
it's tier two, squadron, a sh- uh, type nine squadron shadow, and tier three, a python green Apollo. Uh, appeal for guardian artifacts. Finished short of tier four, with two hundred ninety-eight thousand one hundred and sixty-four units collected. In addition to financial rewards, the top 75% of contributors will also receive a unique anti-Xeno decal. This week's CGs, I'm afraid there aren't any. And that's it for this week's CG News. Flossy told you what to do. Well, that was short and sweet, as we call her telling us about the CGs. Now, <laughs> <laughs> now two veritable artists combine their talents to bring us the Galnet News Digest. We have Beetle Jude, who's a fantastic artist who can draw and paint almost anything that her imagination can devise. And then there's Wotherspoon, who's an entirely different kind of artist and whose imagination is best left... Um, uh, actually, it's... You know what, it's best just left. Galnet News Digest, 7th of April 3308. We read the news so you don't have to. In this week's news, Commanders help Salvation improve his anti-Thargoid superweapons. Voters decide on the Marlinist Protectorate, and a federal subcommittee considers President Hudson's plans to stand for election again next year. Salvation has thanked Commanders who helped collect Guardian relics and says they've helped accelerate the development of new anti-Xeno superweapons. Salvation's words come in a personal message sent to those commanders that assisted in the clandestine collection of this ancient technology. Nearly 300,000 relics were sold to the Masashi, around three-quarters of the number of relics that were stolen from the Aegis megaship Alexandria last year. The Musashi has already jumped with its cargo of Guardian artefacts to a position a little over one light second from the Taurus Mining Ventures base in Titori, following concerns that the ship might become a target for Thargoids once laden. Commodore Morag Halloran has informed commanders who assisted that they have been credited with their reward, and in the light of the many misguided opponents of Salvation's work, asks them to keep the work that they did secret. There is no word yet on when we can expect to see the next generation of Salvation's weapons of mass destruction. Meanwhile, the cover story mining activity in Sinuef CE-R C21-6 has concluded. Taurus Mining Ventures now has nearly 700,000 tonnes of special irradiated ores that will be assessed with a view to their potential commercial value. It's not clear if the company plans to use these ores or to sell them, but the scientific journal The Empirical has been unable to find any evidence that there's anything special about the ores mined in the system at all. Commanders that participated will be rewarded with three excitingly beige paint jobs. That sounds important. It does sound important. I wonder what's going on there. Following Emperor Orissa's offer of protectorate status to the Marlinist colonies, First Minister Octavia Volkov has put the offer to the people of the colonies in a referendum, with the result to be announced by the end of the week. The offer would see trade, communication and defence ties established, with the Empire assisting the colonies with their defence requirements, in return for the colonists swearing allegiance to the Imperial throne. They would be free to maintain their democratic ways while remaining under the Imperial umbrella, and citizens would be free to meet friends and family in the Empire. There is still some resentment in the colonies over the heavy-handed treatment of the Marlinists by Senator Denton Petraeus and the Imperial Navy when the NMLA was threatening the lives of millions of Imperial subjects. 
Can the colonists overcome this in favour of the undoubted benefits that belonging to a larger trading and military grouping will bring? The answer to the question on the ballot paper. Should the Marlinist colonies remain an isolated Republican society or should we move beneath the Empire's protective wing? Is one that could have repercussions for centuries to come. There we go. There we go. So Erisa seems all right. Yeah, it seems okay. She seems okay. She seems like a, a nice one. A nice one. Like, you get what you see. More she than, she more seems than nice, she says nice. Well, he, I think we all know he's not nice, honest, right? I mean, come honest on. Honest Zach. Honest Zach. President Hudson's proposal to change the constitution to allow himself to run for a third term next year has been kicked into the long grass by Congress, which has proposed a congressional subcommittee to consider the implications. The president graciously accepted that more time was needed to consider his proposal, and this may help to reduce the rioting from those opposed to the proposal. Shadow President Winters appeared pleased with the move, saying she was very much looking forward to reading the subcommittee's report. Mr Zachary Hudson is nice um, very comfortable where he is at the top of the Federation. And, and, uh, and his position there, Bruce, I think you'll find all legitimately. And uh, he would like to continue sat in the, that seat for a bit longer than is um, traditional, let's say. And that's this week's Galnet News. Galnet News, we read the news so you don't have to. And Mr. Antonacci is in the chat, and he says Zach Hudson has a great name. I mean, we've got we've got Zach Antonacci, we've got Little Zach, and now we've got Honest Zachary Hudson. The trifecta. The trifecta. <laughs> All the Zachs. Thank you, Commanders Beetle, Jude, and Wotherspoon. Um, who knew the galaxy had so much in it to be digested? <laughs> and now, without any humour, it's mere Harkness with the Hunt and Helper results. Mia, yeah, you, you know this, it's this introduction that doesn't have any humour, don't you? I mean, it, I'm not saying you don't have any sense of humour. I mean, look what you're wearing for a start. What's wrong with what I'm wearing? It's just a thong. I mean, I know it's you can't see because it it's disappeared up into the folds, but it's there. Anyway, uh, welcome to the Hutton Helper results. The Hutton Helper results are sponsored by the Hutton Helper, the only third-party resource to come with a packet of cornflakes containing a secret atomic decoder ring. Ooh. This week we have the following events. The Mysteries of the Galaxy Shield. The Job Lot of Enigma Machines Cup. The Fiendish Sudoku of Missions Challenge, the Gordian Knot of writing loom, of wiring looms even, Deja Vu Trophy, the if 42 is the answer to life, the universe and everything, does that mean there are two Vantians out there? Win uh, throughout their championship. The bus driver through the labyrinth of Gnosis, memory extravaganza. And so put your thinking cap on. Make sure Harry Balzac is in Dictionary Corner and always mark an arrow at each intersection. This week's Hutton Helper results are Comet Bourne jumped 27,000 light years for distance travelled. Sinister Hedgehog sold 29,000 tons of stuff. Top mention runner is Montgomery Python with 200 mission points this week. Alex Zuno handed in 1 billion 10,101,010 credits of bounty vouchers. I wonder if there's a wee message there in binary or something. Evil Flash handed in 276,643,700 credits worth of combat bonds. And M. Grey taxied 548 passengers to destinations far and wide. Decals this week are for NEMB. So please email itookpartatherhuttonorbital.com and arrange to collect your Hutton decal kit, which this week consists of a difference engine, a packet of cryptic love hearts, 
and the Times Crossword. There were two hunting runs this week, so Bon Kui Kui made it in 1 hour, 24 minutes and 5 seconds for 127th place. John Winsund recorded the time of 1 hour, 35 minutes and 17 seconds for 513th place. Must have sought for a wee nap or a coffee or something on the way. Anyway, it looks like me is back on the menu, boys and girls. Queen, these two, they should keep us going for at least a week. Who wants a drumstick? Anyway, there's a whole galaxy of stuff out there that needs shipped, shot, rescued, looted, repaired, destroyed, bought and sold. And you can earn yourself a very fetching hunting decal for doing it. How, you ask? Well, I'm going to tell you how. Just go to hot.forthemug.com and download or sign up for the delicious new Hutton Helper, available in three mouth-watering flavours. Let's face it, anything has to be better than getting stuck in the easy Sudoku in the local Galnet paper. Anyway, that's it for this week. Back to Studio 5. Mia. That looks like a challenge accepted from last week from Alex Zono there. How about 987,654,321 credits next week, Alex? Time now for Amelia Hawke and the Garnet Race Digest. I would ask her how she's doing, but I can't get near her because of all of the paparazzi and her entourage. Good evening. This is Amelia Hawke, reporting for the Galnet Rares Digest. We try all the galaxy's rarest and most dangerous commodities, so you don't have to. George Pantazis. One of the closer systems to the home of humanity, the system description simply states, Panta, meaning always, and cis meaning live, or live. This central star system has been known for its healing powers and paranormal phenomena. Peace and prosperity await all who venture within its borders. One of the earliest refinery systems in the galaxy, Zamka Station, also one of the oldest Corollas ports in the vicinity of Sol, Throughout the centuries, the local population have prided themselves on being one of the most efficient refineries of minerals and metals in the galaxy, and as a result, have made themselves extremely wealthy. Whilst not immediately obvious in this hive of industrial activity, unlike shining high-tech systems or wealthy tourist traps, the station is a hub of deliveries, processing, and collections of refined materials. Under the custody of Hutton Orbital, trade ships visit almost constantly, bringing in a steady flow of raw materials and returning loaded to the brim with heavy processed and precious metals. As for the superstition, whether there is truth in the rumour that all that refined metal has mystical healing presence to those that live and work in the area, the ancient stories of the healing properties of gold and silver, the local red top news outlets are rife with stories of miraculous recoveries, strange phenomena, ghosts, and things that go bump and just out of sight. With the proximity to Van Man and Star, and of course Sol and Earth itself, there are more than a few aging hippies haunting the bars in this station, as well as deep space explorers who, having returned from their with their wealth of data, have opened their own small refinery business and made their fortune, complete with a dose of space madness. It's no surprise that a system like this, with a healthy dose of mysticism and even healthier bank balance, is the site of one of the galaxy's rares. Panta Prayer Sticks. Non-denominational, of course, as that sells better, can be found in just about every corner of the station. The station itself, when you enter through the docking slot, has a haze about it. Not from the refinery, but from the exhaust 
of the living quarters. If you, if you were to lift your remlock for a second and take a deep breath, instead of sucking vacuum, you'd be greeted by the heavy smell of joysticks, of incense. The whole station smells like a Pink Floyd fan's bedroom. The Panta prayer sticks, whose recipe is uh, um, and constituent parts are closely guarded secret, are given their unique flavour thanks to some reportedly very expensive chemicals. Lit at one end, they burn for hours, giving any room a heady aroma and a purple haze. Due to their price, which of course doesn't bother the locals as even the station cleaning crew and sanitation teams are multi-billionaires, Panta prayer sticks are associated with wealth. One whiff of a stick, and you know you're in the presence of someone who probably wouldn't bother to stoop and pick up a stack of credits they dropped. It isn't just, it's just not worth their time. A limited number of the sticks are available for export to the rest of the galaxy, and occasionally shipments head out to some of the further flung reaches of the Milky Way. As with talking on your latest Galphone 200 in public, or wearing that really expensive void opal encrusted watch whilst out and about, smelling of pran Panta prayer, st prayer smoke is sure to get you attention wherever you go. A number of companies make perfumes and aftershaves which are Panta branded, but there's, there's nothing like the original. And therein lies a cautionary tale. I went to George Pantazis. I, I wandered around Zamka. I, I was even given a couple of the sticks in a walnut presentation case. And yes, I spent an evening flying out towards Imperial Space with one of them burning away in my cockpit. Passing through independent space en route, I was subjected to a routine police stop and search. And um, as... Um, this time there was nothing even remotely dodgy aboard my ship, I was more than happy to let the officers aboard, you know, for a search. Opening their visors on their remlocks, their knowing look was enough to tell me that I was in trouble. Opening a notebook, they started raking up the finable offences. Loitering during a police stop and search, a tail light on the ship that was 2% dimmer on one side than the other, a poorly lubricated landing gear, anything that they could find me for, they did. And when I asked why, the simple reply was, well, not as if you can't afford it. Then there was the piracy. Marauding pirates who were singularly unimpressed with my cargo of bio-waste fertilizer, whose eyes lit up and if it was possible, started flashing with credit signs as they glanced around the ship for my valuables. They didn't believe me that there was nothing much of value on the ship, but they couldn't help it. The prayer sticks screamed wealth of them. Light up a panta prayer stick and you'll have a queue of people asking to borrow a few hundred credits. You'll have Brewer Corporation popping by to see if you want a fleet carrier. And outfitters mysteriously out of anything below A-grade components. Of course, if you are as rich as they think you are, then you won't care. It's as ostentatious to your nose as naff cufflinks and huge knots on ties are on recruitment consultants. Or, or red fair de lances with go-faster stripes are for estate agents. Anyway. This is Amelia Hawke reporting for the Galnet Rares Digest, and thanks to George Pantazis, I smell like a billion credits. So you don't have to. Mm, we'll have to they, pay to talk to you now. <laughs> they, they don't smell bad. They have a very distinctive smell, which screams that's money. What, that's what Mia tells us, except it's not money. <laughs> she doesn't smell of money. <laughs> I can make a very distinctive smell. Have a go at this.
Oh. oh God. Again. Oh, oh. Yeah. That doesn't smell I've like I've been that. in the onion rings again. <laughs> you know why they call them onion rings, don't they? The rings around your anus. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yes. Oh. So, oh, God, so yes. my stink. So, Just so, need to lower the tone. But don't you think that the Pantar Prestix, those are very much a metaphor for many other parts of society in that you can only get them if you're rich, and if you get them, it makes you rich. So uh, mm. it's you need daddy's money to be able to do one this. Of those, <laughs> one of those kind of self-fulfilling prophecies as well, isn't it? Yes. You've, you yeah, I've, get, be... I've, get, I've get 15,000 credits to buy a Panta prayer sticks. Congratulations, you're rich. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they're very interesting. I wonder how it works. It's it's probably it's probably nothing to do with it. It's just a it's like a secret handshake, isn't it? Yeah. No, if you've got those, ah, that means you're rich. So fine, plenty of credit then. <clears throat> yes. When you say money goes to money. Yeah. Well, when you say rich, do you mean do you mean the have lots, or do you mean have the lots, have yachts? <laughs> I mean, what what sort of level? Of... <laughs> Rich enough, level to of... be, rich enough to be burning Banta prayer sticks at 15,000 credits a pop. Well, you, yeah. you do I have to light them with a 500 Money credit note. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I swear your jokes get worse and worse. Yeah. No, I, I swear when his jokes get worse get anyway. Worse, they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Don't, you, don't do the certain German sausage joke. Well, I, I tell the jokes so you don't have to. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Not the German sausage yeah. joke. Tell, not. Yeah. I wonder. You know, the, you know, we were t- talking earlier about the uh, the drink there, the Cali Macho. How they t- they took really crap red wine and added something to it to make a a drink that was acceptable. I wonder what we could add yeah. to Chicks' jokes. We don't jokes. have any. Coke. I don't think, yeah, uh, we don't have any coke humor. Jokes. Humor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We don't have any joke coke. Timing. What's the secret? It's Timing. a good comedy. <laughs> Timing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, um, yes. Is it what? What kind of coke is it? Is it, is it like diet coke or? I imagine it's, it's regular. I mean, I imagine yeah, you're the expert. You're the, you're I, well, it, it's, expert. It's, it's, It'll be full fat coke. Full fat. Right. Yeah. Well, let me just have a look at the, the just Coca Cola based soft drink. Mm. What about so Dr Pepper? Pepsi. Would that count? Mm, that's not a Coca. No, that's not a. Do do- no. But it's not cola. It's not cola. Dr but- Pepper's nice. Cork isn't. <laughs> it, 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 it's made by Coca Cola, though. I never like to tell Fro- Flossie she's wrong, but. <laughs> but you're going in. I don't like. It. <laughs> wow. Yes. Yeah. Um, only, the only cola I ever liked was Nimmo's cola with a K. What about? Oh, oh you want to buy it from someone who can't spell? Oh, I don't think you'd want to do that. No. Iron Brew is not a cola, though, is it? <laughs> no. No, but I mean, would it work with red wine? No, no. Iron yeah. Brew would just eat through the glass. That's the problem. Well, it's <laughs> it's really sweet, Iron Brew. So yeah, if, if you know, if the wine was a bit sour, if it get off or something, that might bring it up. And sweeten it. Iron Brew and Buckfast. That must have a must have. Oh, a that's night. that is tooth raw, That's tooth sticky right there. But the, both surely, really if I walk really into sweet. a into what if I walk into a Glaswegian bar and ask for Iron Brew and Buckfast, what what do I ask for? Obviously, a smack in the mouth. But what, yeah, it, an eye opener. I, I don't I don't know that anybody's. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure somebody's done it. I'm sure people have done it. It's not like a pile driver or something like that. It's fucking you don't Kindred, generally you um, don't generally buy Buckfast in a pub. Pubs no. don't really sell it. Right, selling out shop job is it? Oh, well, you yes, can do. Here yes, we go. Uh, I've just found a pub boss is doing a roaring trade flogging, flogging Buckfast mixed with Iron Brew style flavoured ale. Mm. Right. So it's not a cocktail. No, that was. No, it's a flavour, a style flavoured ale. Oof. Oh, yeah, yeah, that so was it. That, beer in it. So that that was in that there London. Iron Brew and beer. Bucky Bombs, he's called them. Yeah. They used, to do, there used to be a place down the road for me that would do get a Buckfast milkshake. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Does oh, the, yeah. does the milk not all Other separate? than that, it was a really nice burger place, actually. Oh, I'm just but finding one. Well, here's a, here's a like, Buckfast Tenants and Iron Brew cocktail. What's that called? Uh, uh, Put the internet down before you hurt yourself. I'm looking, it's, it's in Glasgow. Um, it's they strange. called something like a jaggy bonnet. <clears throat> well, they, they sell other things. Grinch's Hole. Rum Papa Punch. Oh, 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 oh. 
Crunchy's whole food. Funky Abigail is mentioning Jolt Cola. Oh, Jolt Cola, women. yeah. I've heard is, that that. A, is that an Antipodean a, thing? To... Midden went in a, 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 some kind of nostalgic run back to the 1980s where he was trying to find the name of a kind of cola he used to like. He thought it was called Wild Cola, which was made by bars. I do like Karma Cola. Karma Cola? I've just seen yes, a can it's... of Jolt Cola. It looks it's like, like organic. If you're yeah. tuning in late, welcome to the Cola Hour. <laughs> 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 Where experts discuss brown fizzy cola. drinks. <laughs> caramel was the colouring, you know. Yeah. Is it E102 right, caramel? That, that, that's, right, that's, that's, <laughs> I think that's bored the, the listener enough, I think. Yeah. I think we should yeah, say I agree. Okay. Yeah. We're going to well, everyone. We're it's going to get our late. stuff ready. So, and th- don't forget, everybody, listen to the tune and then find out who says goodbye at the end. Oh, it's a secret. It's different today, Ooh. children. <laughs> <laughs> Headphones off. It's a secret as well, isn't it? Already off. For the mug! For the the mug! mug! No journey too long and no cargo too small. The profit margins never really mattered at all. We're gonna take the cargo where it's needed today. Super cruising all across the Milky Way. We'll take anything, anytime, anywhere. Loading up the teen eyes to the brim with grace. For the mug, for the mug. Yeah, you know just where we're coming from. For the mug, for the mug. Now everybody sing the hot and drunk a song. For the mug. Flossy always seems to crash into the sun. Likes the pilot on the Xbox One. Alvin at the front, you know he leads us well. Trucking across the galaxy, now everybody yells. For the back, for the back. Yeah, you know just where we're coming from. For the back, for the back. Now everybody sing the hot and trucker song. Everyone's buggered off now, so why don't you bugger off too? Seamless.